Hey y'all, happy Friday. Happy preparation for your Saturday. It's the weekend, baby. Anyway, you guys know I read that little short today um, to you guys in regards to, you know, fleeing fornication and being celibate, right? Um, then you guys know that the father loves celibacy, right? Because it helps you prepare yourself for your own husband, your own wife, right? And it allows you to not be so lustful or be tempted of sorting your royal oaks or open yourself up to the world, right? Because again, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 2, KJV versions, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, flee fornication. Hmm? Let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. So you see, the reason why the father is saying this because if you don't flee fornication, you know, that's how you become tempted. That's how you become lustful, right? You know, you have to learn how to discipline yourself, right? You know, as for the men, you know, controlling your little head, you know, with your big head. But not letting your little head control your big head, right? That's the problem, right? If you flee for fornication, you know, and practice celibacy, you know, and keep on asking the father to send your husband a wife, but prepare yourself for it in, in, in spirit and truth, like, in keeping it real, he will send it to you, right? He'll send your husband and wife. Remember, remember you guys, I said, um, in the latter days, it's going to be seven women to one man. That is true, right? As you guys see now, so many women out there saying, oh, man, I'm tired of being single. Oh, you know, this independent stuff sucks. Yes. It always sucked. It was just the feminine movement, you know, program. We got the women putting it out, that feminine women programming, you know, you guys to make yourself believe that just being independent is the thing to do. I don't even know, you know, it's, if a woman being independent is a thing to do because remember, the man supposed to be our lead, right? He's supposed to be independent for us. So when we become, when we make ourselves believe that we're just so independent, then we also being independent against our, our husband or our better half. So we have to keep in mind that, you know, being independent can mean being single for the rest of your life because you don't give that man the benefit of the doubt to open that door for you or carry your bags or just treat you like a woman because you're so used to being independent and you feel like you don't need a man. But when you get a certain age, you realize that being independent sucks. You was programmed that way, you know, to ruin your chances of living a happy life or having a husband or a wife and children and living the way it's supposed to be under the way the Father want us to be, right? You didn't trick yourself out of all that because you listen to everybody, the man, instead of listening to the Father on him telling you and preparing you how to walk through this life so you can, you know, walk through this life in a smooth transition, right? So, you guys, we have to be careful, you know, uh... Sorting our royal oath and open ourselves up to the world. We have to. Because another thing if we don't realize that we don't realize that the most we give ourselves to people and sort our royal oaths, we're just collecting these spirits. Different spirits from different people, right? Now you acting like Tom, Dick, Harry, Mary, and Jane. Because you collected all those spirits because you didn't give yourself to them. So never think that when you land with somebody, that's not connecting you in a soulful way. Because it is. It's spiritually connecting you and it's soulfully tying you to that person. And that's why we create these feelings because that person can make us feel some kind of way, right? And because we're not using our mind logically, but we're using our lustful desires, you know, to get uh, to get our desires fulfilled from that person. Therefore, we can't logically make a sound decision, you know, to separate lust, you know, um, temptation, you know, opposed to just using our mind and making the right decision, you know. So we would be able to uh, stop that temptation when it comes flying forth to us, right? Now... Also, when you flee in um, fornication, you know, and practice celibacy, you're going to get tested a lot. If it's just your luck, soon you start trying to, you know, keep your stuff to yourself and stop giving it to everybody, you know, that's when you're really going to get tested, right? But remember, only strong survive, right? And that's going to test your, your, your strength. Are you strong enough to do it? Are you strong enough to practice celibacy, right? Are you strong enough to flee fornication, right? And it's only hard... If you allowed yourself to practice so much sexual mortality until you done overflowed your own self. Until you know you too deep in until you can't even stop it. Right? 
That's only when it's hard because you gave yourself up so much. You've been collecting all these spirits into your body until it's hard to relieve them, right? So now you got to relieve them one by one, right? And you be thinking you be normal, but you don't be normal because you got all these spirits in you. And you've been collecting so many spirits, now you're doing what they do. It's not even normally you. It's because that person made you feel a, a certain kind of way instantly because you wasn't logically losing your, using your mind to make a sound decision, you let this person come and infiltrate your sexual desires, right? Infiltrate you and have you to perform these sexual acts that makes you feel a certain kind of way that's not even beneficial to you, right? It don't even, you know, make you feel, it, it, what it does is it makes you feel good in a lustful way, but in the end, you still be lonely and you still be empty and void because basically the person violated you. Even though you didn't even realize you've been violated you because they didn't violate you to make you feel a certain way sexually, right? But you can't even have them because you so you didn't go programs yourself to make yourself believe all I need is a whatever, some sperm or a nut or whatever, you know, oh, for that moment. You know, in that moment of time, having sex and feeling good, you know, that one night of pleasure, you know, but after that night of pleasure, then what? Now you got to go home and lay in your bed, you know, and, and warm yourself up with the covers, right? You know, mesmerize on, on how that person made you feel uh, to fulfill your sexual desires, right? But when that thought go, that memory gone, you still ain't got nothing. But now... You don't allow yourself to be open up more, you know, and distance away from your husband that the father do want you to have or your wife that the father do want you to have, right? Trust and believe if you practice um, celibacy and if you flee fornication, don't think the father's not watching, right? Because he loves, you know, someone who, who practices celibacy, right? He wants you to do that because it disciplines you, right? And it prepares you for your own husband and wife, right? And... Uh, in doing so, practicing celibacy and everything and fleeing fornication, you know, it allows you to flee temptation. It builds strength in you, right? So you can be able to handle these vile things and handle these vile um, sexual desires that's already in you. You know, you can start relieving them and you can also push forth back those temptations that's trying to come at you, right? So remember, it's always mind of a matter, right? And just go into the word. Reading the scripture because the scriptures, whether you guys believe it or not, it prepares you and it teaches you how to walk throughout this world, right? Again, flee fornication. Stop practicing celibacy. We got so many men and so many women on here, you know, now saying, oh, I'm so tired of being single. Oh, I'm so tired of this. Yes, what you thought was going to come to? And that's what happened. We, in, and we younger, you know, we, we imprison our own minds in the reality that our life is just going to be forever. We don't appreciate and value. We do depreciate and value, right? When you hot, fine, younger, tenderoni, you know, that's when you're supposed to make proper decisions so you can be okay in your elderly life, you know? You may, you know, we have so many people when they're young, they feel like, okay, well, this is the time to do everything. Okay, it's the time to do things. And the father said, yeah, being young, we make immature decisions, right? But also, we just can't be stupid. You know, and now we younger selves to go depreciate our body, you know, go give ourselves to the world, go sort our royal out royal oats, right? Because what do you know or not? We depreciate our body there. Open our legs 24-7. What that man be saying, what they be saying, oh gee, ain't got no walls. I didn't heard that. Because this lady done slept with so many people, she don't know she just stretching her vagina out. And it's becoming worse and worse. And it's becoming older and then she getting these having these pH balances. And then they gotta go use that long bloom deodorant stuff they didn't create it. Just to cover it because of all the people she let going in and out of her. And all, not to mention all the spirits that's connecting her and all the soul ties that's creating a monster out of her and make her feel this kind of way and do this kind of thing and make her act this kind of way because she don't even be in her right mind because that person that got her feeling this way all sexually to mess her up for making a sound decision. Same thing for a man. So the same thing I just said for a woman also apply that to a man because he do the same thing. You go around and you, you sort your royal oaths, you know, connecting yourself to this person, receiving their spirits, tying yourself softly. They got you thinking here, doing that, doing that. You can't make a sound decision because this person then whipped you out, you know, with their sexual ways, fulfilling your desires, you know, and you now you can't even differentiate right from wrong. So you think because this person can make you feel good sexually, this go, this the way your life's supposed to be. No, because sex is not everything. But a family who pray together, who stays together, 
that's who stays together, right? Because sex gonna get all is overrated. You know, just having sex 24-7, laying on your back. You don't do nothing but appreciating your body. You know, what are you getting out of it? Laying on your back and probably a disease that you can't get rid of it, especially if it's not your your soon to be husband, your soon to be wife. You know, because also keeping in mind, remember back in the days, there was not no contract with a marriage and wife. It was only witnesses. You know, and some people still live that way. So you got those people that have been together for years, 20, 30 years. Now the witness, they know they might well say they come in law marriage because witnesses have seen them been together. Like, so they consider them their man, that, that man, that woman, husband and wife, right? So I, I still believe on the eyes, that's still the covenant because what matters is you being witness. You know, not even the fact that the state been in your life and marrying you guys under their contract, but having witnesses, people that sin, you get married and an elder marrying you, that's still being married. So again, you probably, you got these people that been together 20, 30 years, you know, and no, I would not consider that fornication just because they not they don't have a signed contract, but it also can be a covenant of the father, right? With witnesses, right? You know, so look, the thing to do. And what the father recommends is us to have our husband and our wife, our own husband, our own wife, to flee fornication, right? You know, to practice celibacy because it begin again, practicing celibacy builds your strength, right? It, it it stops that temptation. It allows you to make a lot of good decisions because now you're making decisions with your mind instead of your lower body or the parts that make you feel a certain kind of way, okay? So, again, you guys... um flee fornication, okay, practice celibacy, because I, I know you want a husband or a wife, because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it through the media all day, all you hear is men want a husband, I want a wife, but the problem is they're not preparing themselves, okay, uh, look, it is very important, you want your husband or wife, first and foremost, you need to go to the father, remember, all good things are gone, remember, because back in the days, yeah, we was able to get a husband and wife, but the era was different, people was different, right, Things were normal, okay? Right now, things are upside down. Everything is contrary to the Father. So what's right is wrong, what's wrong is right. That's the norm now. So because of that, the only way, the only way, again, the only way in this era of time that you're going to get a husband or a wife is through the Father. Because... People are not the same no more. People don't know how to make sound decisions no more. They don't know how to go about trying to get a husband or wife because of these modern ways that's been programmed on them. So remember, all good things are gone. The only way to get a husband and a wife is if the father sent them to you. And the only way for the father to send it to you is you got to practice your, practice that in spirit and truth, right? And what I mean with practice celibacy, flip fornication, you know, you, you talking about Oh, I'm single, but yet you got Tyrone or Lakeisha coming over your house at night to get your rocks off. No, that's not preparing yourself for a husband or a wife. Because when you get that husband or wife, you still can't be right because you did not discipline yourself. And you did not prepare yourself. So when you meet that person, that, that husband or wife didn't come from the um, father. Because believe you me, he ain't finna see no husband or wife. And you sitting around here trying to get a husband or wife, but you sleeping in people incognito. So when you get that man or woman... That you consider to be your husband or wife, it did not come from the father, okay? Remember, the father greatest gift to us is, remember, practicing celibacy. Nevertheless, fleeing fornication, letting us have our own husband or wife. Because a man who finds a good wife finds a good thing, vice versa, okay? So, look at here. Be careful. You want that man and that wife? You want it? You know, um, you want this great family? Right now, it's scarce. Trust and believe me when I say all oh, good things are gone. We're not back in that era of time. You just can't go out there and get your man and woman like we used to. Uh-uh, because it don't even exist no more. That era is gone. All the matriarchs and patriarchs from that era basically is gone too. We're in a whole new era. We're in a new world order where things are contrary to the Father and we are in a great fall in the way. So again, if you want your husband or if you want your wife, the only way you're going to get it is through the Father. By praying practicing celibacy, fleeing fornication, not tricking yourself, not thinking that, you know, uh, you single, but you're still sleeping around. That don't do it neither. The father one, remember, he going to send to your heart. And if you do it, he will reward you. I promise you he going to reward you. I'm trying to tell you because I like I did a little a story a while ago, and I tell y'all, my, my life was never what the, was average to me. Even when it come to men, so many of them got killed in my life. But that let me know that 
it was something great that the Father had for me, and he was preparing me for something, you know, actually prepared me for the very man that I got that I kept praying for, and I practiced celibacy, you know, I flee fornication, even before that, I wasn't just around sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, um, I was dating the guy, but then after him, I feel he was the one, so I just laid back, and I got on my knees, and I prayed, and I cried out, and I told the Father I was not going to compromise, but I let that guy go, because he drained me, and I done a a story about that and, and let me know he was sent probably from the devil anyway you know to do that so the father can allow me to know the difference between god's sin and what we lean on our own understanding so with that guy his name was marco i liked him but like i told y'all i mean he had no problem with taking care of me but he drained me mentally because he was broken he was a very broken man with no spirit he was dead but he was still walking right and i knew it was something to that because it was just something i never experienced and when i say i was drained i was drained i was all my engine everything was gone that had never happened to me and the things i would go through like this is just this is unheard of from a man right just being so broken had no spirit just no life in them at all just like that that paid their horse, their horse that the revelation is gonna ride through. He was like that. And I know, you know, when time went past, yeah, I know he I had to be sent for the five just so he could show me, you know, because he didn't cheat on me, he didn't do none of that. You know, he he took care of me financially, had no problem with that. The problem was he was just broken, you guys. He he had no like nothing to live for, like just no happy in him, no spirit in him, like just a pale person with all life gone, right? He was still alive, but he was still dead in the inside. And it was so strange about it because his mama also knew. And then I asked his mama, like, what? why is your son like that? And she really kept it real and said she had man problems growing up. So her son was all messed up. And then she asked me, you know, can I be there for him? And I told her, no, I, I can't. You know, I, I, I try, but I can't because it is draining me mentally and physically, you know. And that was because I was leaning on my own understanding. And in fact, I tried to get on my knees and ask the father to change him up because I, I told him, you know, I know that it's nothing impossible with the father. He can also make crooked straight. But at the same time, I was leaning on my own understanding, asking the father to make this crooked man straight. But the father, no, no, he was not going to make him straight because he was only the, a testament in my life and a testimony to show me that this is not the one. And I leaned on my own understanding and he's going to drain you out. Right. But I, he needed me to know the difference. He had to put enmity, enmity between that. Right. He needed me to know the difference because when he sent my future husband, I'm thinking now in my, in my life. I know it was God sin, but he needed me to see the difference. And, and oh, I see it 100 percent The father said, Well, he bring it together, let no man put asunder. Okay? Like I don't even had an inclination in my mind, you know, because the man surprised me over and over again just with the knowledge of the father and the knowledge of just walking down the right path, right? A knowledge, just a knowledge of making sure that he leaves and making sure I'm good. You understand? And keeping me in my place, because I can get a little bit crazy sometimes, you know, because Again, you know, in this modern world, we was raised to be independent and all that. So, shoot, growing up, man, I was doing a lot on my own. You know, I'm making my decision, doing it because I was independent. You know, running the show, running men, and doing what I wanted to do until I met him. But trust and believe me, he just didn't come overnight. It took years. It took preparation. Even me, the father prepared me to get where I'm at to even receive him. Because in my prior state, I couldn't have received him, accepted him because I was too independent now of course i still have to do things you know but at the same time um having someone that the father sent to you takes a lot of weight off your shoulder because now i don't have to be so independent now i don't have to be so strong you know what i mean i don't have to like be uh worry about this and that and that, and that because now i got him to worry about it and he takes on that because he knows his role as the leader okay and i if he was not he didn't come to me on my own understanding, but I prayed and I cried and I compromised and I prayed and I cried and I compromised and I prayed and I cried and I compromised. I compromised my own love life. And I told the father I wasn't going to compromise him, but I was going to compromise myself, in which I did. And I cried and I prayed and I compromised and I said, Father, please send me my husband. And he did. Okay. And I'm telling y'all. I know it's him because it's just so different. He, I can't compare this man to not not one man I've ever been with, ever. And I have been with uh, some great, you know, great people. Don't get me wrong. Throughout my life, you know, um, because again, as we young, we make these decisions, immature decisions, not knowing no better. You know, but when you get older, you gotta look back and be like, "Oh, I made all these decisions. I wish I known better. You know, I would have made different decisions." But because I didn't have examples set me 
I didn't really have the decisions to make. So therefore, you know, we take what was given to us at a young age, growing up in a certain environment. However, once you start trying to reach out to the Father for him to help you and teach you to guide you, then he bring this knowledge to you so you can understand. So now, at this age I am now, I understand. You know, me when I was being young, I was having fun and probably wasn't doing the right things. You understand? Uh, but I was young, and of course I didn't know no better, but at the same time I still took care of myself. You know, and if I was sleeping with somebody, I just was sleeping with everybody just where I knew how to use condoms. You understand? I knew how to have them on me like white on rice in my pack, you know, even though I was young. So even though I was young and I probably was having sex, you know, um, with my boyfriend, I probably broke up, you know, and then with this guy and had sex with him because, okay, I was a teenager and that's what many women teenagers do because we don't know no better. But now I think we are learning better because we are, we are rising and we being gathered to be restored, you know, okay. Uh, but now, I know, so those decisions making that throughout my life, and I had the opportunity to, to be married, but it was me. I'm trying to take that independent mindset, you know, been proposing everything. It was me because uh -uh, I wasn't ready. And even had it, it told me about two people, oh, I get good man, throw away. And yes, I, I, I'm sure I have because me being independent, right, and not thinking that I'm going to need this person when I get older, that one in my mind. So I had to wait till I get older and sacrifice. Okay, and sacrifice real hard for me to get my husband because I could have had my husband when I was younger, but because I wanted to be independent. Okay, I shut that down. I wanted to go on shopping trips. I had men. I just had, had them spend their money. They didn't have no problem with it neither. You understand? I loved going on shopping trips because I was young. And then when people want to settle down with me, uh, uh I didn't want to because I was young. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to spend money, and that's what I did. So what happened? I had to wait until my forties. The father said my husband and I sacrificed and I cried everything because I knew that I did not want to be alone. Mm -mm, I ain't gonna lie to myself. When I became a certain age, I gotta sit around and think like this ain't gonna work. Because when you get a certain age, you realize you really ain't got no friends. You ain't really got nobody, it's just really you because people didn't gain all this baggage throughout their life, just baggage after baggage, making wrong decisions. So by the time they get that your age, they be depressed, distressed, and just no help at all because they got so many problems from making all the wrong decisions, right? So therefore, now you at a certain age, you at home. For the most part, them women at 40 and 50 be at home alone because their friends probably start hating on them because they didn't probably got successful and this friend ain't successful. So now you can't even got nobody to talk to or none of that. So now you home alone. No man, no, no, no real friend just at home thinking about all decisions you done made when you was younger. Now you like, man, I need a man. Now you realize it's too late. But it is really not too late. I'm telling you, if you preserve yourself and take care of yourself, trust and believe me, because we still can make decisions. Some of us at our age, we still can look good at a certain age. We still took care of ourselves, but we still can probably be needy for a man. So it's not too late. I'm telling you what you got to do. Hmm, you can't live in your own understanding, though. You're only going to get it through the father. Because remember, all good things are gone. You know, right now it's seven, men, seven women to a, a man, you know, and that's just what it is. Now, you know, there is still some red ones out there, but those are preserved. Those are pre preserved for the for the father, the anointed, or the chosen ones, you know, who's preparing themselves because they already know this world.